Hey, I heard you want to improve your audio. I get it. I get it. I get it. Audios are one of those things that you just want to work. It's not really taught in schools and you just don't really want to mess with it. I mean, most of the stuff are not really taught in school. So here's five really easy and simple tips to improve your audio. It's always good to improve your audio, especially when you're a content creator. You don't want to mess with your audio and suddenly you sound like a robot or you turn the knob a little bit of the volume and your audio starts speaking and it just sounds terrible absolutely terrible so here are some really easy ways to improve your audio hello everyone my name is Iral and i make youtube videos about video editing content creation streaming and everything in between i guess <laughs> and yes i also stream on youtube on my other channel which is odd not plus it's a gaming channel and of course because i love games let's just say that and lately i've been on the space for quite some time now and i've had some issues with my audio that i have experienced myself and i want to teach you guys what are things that you can improve or you know elevate the quality of your audio so in this video we're gonna talk exactly about that so without further ado here's tip number one make sure your mic is facing you i'ma be honest this happens way too often especially to streamers and content creators even myself because microphones have this thing called polar patterns it's not that complicated to understand but basically the most common one are omnidirectional and cardioid think about it as shapes that in a specific direction they can pick up signals or in this case volume or audio your voice not every side of the microphone can pick up your voice equally especially when you're using this thing this thing is a cardioid microphone it picks up most of the sound on the front some of it on the back but more of the echoes on the back here let me let me demonstrate um how do i how do i do this uh, let me turn my microphone now, this is the back of my microphone now and suddenly i don't sound so good and when I turn it back in the front, it would sound a lot better. I hope. I hope the audio picked it up or the video picked it up. And most of the time, streamers and content creators don't really know the orientation of their mic. And it's really easy to know which is which. Just, just check it. Take a little bit of your time to listen to yourself. Usually, it's on the front side of the condenser microphone. And some other microphone is usually on the top. Like the very infamous Shure SM7B. It's on the top. I myself have a condenser mic. It's called Fifine. Fifine. It's, it's a good mic. Fifine K669B. I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's really awesome. By the way, I'm not sponsored. But you should definitely check this thing out if you're planning to buy a microphone. It's really good for new content creators such as myself. I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested. You can go check it out yourself. So basically, yes, that's one of the greatest tips I can give you. Just make sure your mic is facing you. Of course, there are other kinds of mic, like the one you use with that earbuds, earbuds microphone. Those are generally omnidirectional, meaning it can pick up audio in a 3D space, in a sphere. I'll try to show a diagram as well of what I'm talking about, what the polar patterns is. But basically, everything around that area of the polar pattern, that is where the sound can be picked up by that specific microphone. Right, moving on. Tip number two is the closer the mic, the better. I had this issue when I was first streaming. I just don't want the mic to be seen by the camera, so I decided to move it away. And as a result, they can't hear me as well. <laughs> because mics have this thing called the proximity effect, meaning the closer you are, the more frequency the mic picks up and the better the audio sounds. Have you ever wondered why ASMR is ASMR? You know, it's just like that. It sounds better for some reasons. It's actually more about the frequencies. It, let's not get too scientific, let's not get too typical, but it's more of common sense. Of course, the closer you are to the mic, the better. For example, hello. Have you drank your water yet? Remember to stay hydrated. Have you tried drinking water? It's really nice. Really, really nice. Stay hydrated. Nowadays, most mics, when you buy them, they come with a stand in which you can put on your desk and just talk. Something like a podcast. And trust me, moving it just a little bit closer to your mouth makes the difference. It's actually night and day. But the issue is, when you have a stand, it's closer to your keyboard as well, especially when you're playing a game or streaming. So you kind of want the mic 
away from your keyboard but near your face as well. Which brings me to my next tip which is this thing. Get a boom arm. A boom arm. Don't even get the expensive one. Just get a cheaper one. I have one from Shopee or Lazada. I can't remember where I bought it. I bought it for around 150 pesos, 200 pesos. Yes, it's not that cheap, but comparing it to 2,500 and 5,000 pesos, I I can bet you this is way way cheaper. Quote me on. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to work because what a boom arm does is it brings the mic closer to your mouth meaning it eliminates the sound of your keyboard and focuses more on your voice. It doesn't completely remove the sound but it minimizes it to a certain point because it's physics. Farther the objects, less sound you hear. <laughs> Very obvious. And it also removes boomy sounds, especially when you're tapping on your desk or moving your mouse too much or when you lose a game, you know, just... And it's really, really handy because you can attach stuff on it. Which brings me to my next point. Get a shock mount or a pop filter, or get them both. Now the shock mount is this thing right here. This contraption, this weird looking contraption thingy where you slot your mic in. It's basically allows your mic to just levitate in a way. It just removes the vibrations created by, you know, vibrations. Because that's where the sound, that's basically the essence of sound, vibrations. If you pat your desk like that, the vibration of the desk will travel all the way to your boom arm and all the way to your mic. And if you don't have a boom arm, it's gonna travel straight up into the mic because you only have a stand, which is standing on the desk. Now the shock mount ele eliminates, eliminates, elim removes, <laughs> removes those audio by acting like more of a jelly instead of a hard concrete. It removes small vibrations. Now the pop filter, Pop filter and windscreens are actually two different things. People get confused by this. They are not the same thing. They serve different purpose. You know when you you know what? Let me let me get my my other microphone. Um this. Not sure if you can see this. I hope the camera catches it. Um this is called the windscreen. Clue is in the name, it's called windscreen because it's supposed to minimize the noise of the wind. It's really, really useful for vlogging. By the way, this thing is Boya. BYM1. It's really cheap. Also recommend this microphone for new for new content creators. It's really really cool. You can just clip it here and just be good with it. Really cheap as well. Really useful. Oh, and by the way, the polar pattern of this thing is omnidirectional. So if you have that, um, there you go. Free info. <laughs> but this thing is a pop filter. There's a difference between a windscreen and a pop filter. While the windscreen protects the audio from the noise of the wind, pop filters reduces the pops or in this case, the plosives. What exactly are plosives? Well, plosives are the P, the B, the T, D, K, and G. Those letters produce a quite an explosive sound. They have some force or pop when you try pronouncing it. Uh, if you don't believe me, try it for yourself. You would really notice it if you put your hand on front of your mouth and then say P, B, T, D, K. There's, there's air, like poof. It's The air is rushing through it, that's why. And the pot filter reduces those kinds of plosives. It reduces that awkward plosive sound. Let me demonstrate. Um, wear some headphones because this is where you actually get to notice really notice the difference when you're wearing headphones and this is gonna be quite uncomfortable peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers a peck of pickled peppers peter piper picked peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers a peck of pickled peppers peter piper picked there you have it i'm not sure if the microphone picked it up i'm pretty sure the microphone peaked when i remove the pop filter. That's why these things are really good. It's really, really handy. It will improve your audio a lot. You can't really notice it when you're on your phone, on the speakers, unless you have really good speakers like these phones these days. I have a really old one, so. And finally, I'll bring you to my last tip, which is audio signal processors. You know that sounds like a lot, but basically these are your EQs, your compressors, your noise gates, your limiters, your expanders, etc, etc, et Yeah, these are basically the things that you can process the audio on your microphone. It's really, really handy, especially when you know how to use them. If you don't, well then, stay subscribed and hit that notification bell because I will teach you how to in the easiest and simplest way as I can. But here's a short rundown on how these things work. Let's say EQs or equalizer. 
let's say there's a piano, right? Now, let's represent as the piano as your voice. Every time you speak, imagine hitting all of the keys on the piano, like all 88 keys of the piano. Just slam it down and then you produce your own voice. Now, the way the EQ works is minimize the other sounds of the piano. Instead of using 88 keys, let's say you're gonna use around 50 because EQ or equalizer has frequencies, the same as your voice. Now, minimizing other frequencies may improve your voice. Just imagine playing a chord instead of playing the entire piano, just slamming all the notes down. That's basically how EQ works. Now compressors, clues in the name, it compresses your audio. Anything that is really, really loud, it compresses down to uh, audible audio so that it's not too loud. That is basically what audio signal processors is. Now I know it sounds like really hard because no one really talks about this no stay sub because i will teach you exactly how to do it step by step in the simplest and easiest way as i can and that is basically it five tips that you can use to improve your audio if you've managed to reach this point leave a like comment down below if you have any questions i really appreciate them i take my time to read them and respond to each and every one if you have any questions feel free to jump into my stream on youtube just hit me up with a question in the comment section i would really appreciate it and if you've managed to reach all the way to the very end thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you next time peace <laughs>